All right, so let's do another example here of this idea of comparative advantage and trade. And to do that, let's think about two students, right? We've got some Chris's out there and we've got some Lauren's. Um, so uh, let's imagine that we have two individuals that are working at a restaurant, right? And each of them have different strengths and abilities. And we can imagine what their production possibilities frontier looks like, what their production is, what they're capable of producing. Um, and so this particular restaurant's a little strange. It just produces lots lattes and pizza. Um, but in this case, let's imagine that Chris, at best, he could produce 25 lattes during his shift. Right? Or if he spent all his time producing pizzas, he could produce 100 pizzas. Right? He's much better at producing pizzas. He can produce them more quickly. Um, it takes him a little bit more time to do lattes. All right, so that becomes his production possibility uh, frontier. We can think about um, graphing that. So he can produce, um, at most, 100 pizzas and no lattes. Or he could produce 25 lattes and no pizzas. So this becomes his production possibilities frontier. And I'm going to label that PPF uh, for Chris. All right, now let's imagine Lauren. Lauren is a lot more uh, careful when she uh, when she produces. And so when it takes her a longer amount of time to produce one latte or to produce a pizza. So in particular, she might be spending time um, you know, making pretty designs and latte art, um, or she's just very methodical about how she places the pepperoni. But in any event, the best she could do is to produce 12 lattes. Right? Or if she's given, um, if she just spends all her time producing pizzas, the best she could do would be to produce 12 pizzas. Right? So she's not as productive overall as Chris. Right? If we look at that on a production possibilities frontier, we'd say that at most she could produce 12 pizzas or she could produce 12 lattes. Right? So this line here becomes her production possibilities frontier. Okay, so this is the PPF for Lauren. And notice that this one is completely inside the PPF for Chris. That's one way of showing that she's not as productive overall. Right? That Chris can produce more of both. And the way that the term that we use for that is to say that Chris has an absolute advantage. Right? He has an absolute advantage in the production of lattes because he can produce more. 25 is more than 12. Right? And he has an absolute advantage in the production of pizzas. 100 is more than 12. Right? So when we decide, though, to uh, to think about production, um, it's not enough to think about the absolute advantage and the absolute costs of producing. Right? What we should be thinking about is the comparative advantage. Because even though Chris has an absolute advantage, we'll see that he doesn't have a comparative advantage in both goods. The way that we see that is to think about opportunity cost. Now, your opportunity cost is reflected, remember, in the slope of the production possibilities frontier. So the slope of the production possibilities frontier gives me the opportunity cost of producing the good on the x-axis. Right? So another way to see this is to say, how much does it cost Chris to produce one latte? It's got to be a number in, in the, in, with pizza as the units. Right. So it's got to be. Um, calculated by taking 100 pizzas divided by 25 lattes. And that gives me four pizzas per latte. Right? So the cost of one latte is four pizzas. Right? That's also going to be the slope of his production possibilities frontier, four pizzas per latte. And that tells me the cost, what it costs him to produce one more latte. And likewise, we can think about the opportunity cost of producing pizzas. It's actually going to be one over this slope. Right? The, the way I would calculate this would be to take 25 lattes divided by 100 pizzas. And that gives me a slope of 1 fourth. It gives me an opportunity cost of 1 fourth of a latte per pizza. Right? So each latte, each pizza costs him a quarter of a latte. Each latte costs him four pizzas. Right? And we can do the same calculation for Lauren. Right? For Lauren, we would take um, 12 pizzas divided by 12 lattes. That's a ratio of one pizza per latte. Right? So the cost of a latte is just one pizza. 
again, that's going to be the slope of her production possibilities frontier. One pizza per latte, one P divided by L. Okay, so this gives me the opportunity cost of producing lattes. The opportunity cost of pizzas is just going to be the reciprocal of that, one over this. Again, it's going to be in the form of lattes, right? The units are going to be lattes. So it costs her one latte to produce one pizza. So when we talk about comparative advantage, we're asking who can produce these goods more cheaply, right? So look at the cost. In this case, for lattes, it costs Lauren one pizza and it costs Chris four pizzas. So even though Chris has an absolute advantage, it costs him relatively more. So we would say that Lauren is the one that has the comparative advantage in producing lattes because one is less than four. Right? That means that when I look at pizzas, right, I have one fourth is less than one. So the person with the comparative advantage in pizzas is Chris. So when I think about who has the absolute advantage, that's given by how much each of them can produce. Right? And so Chris can have the absolute advantage in both goods, but he can't have the absolute advantage in, uh, he can't, I'm sorry, he can't have the comparative advantage in both goods. In this case, he only has a comparative advantage in producing pizzas. Lauren has the comparative advantage in producing lattes. And we can use this to their advantage, right? By allowing these individuals to specialize in the good that they have a comparative advantage in, we can see that they'll be able to gain from trade. So let's, let's see how that works. Um, first, let's think about what might happen if they were to produce independently, right? If they're left to their own devices, so on their own, let's think about what they can produce. Right. Suppose Lauren spent half her time producing pizzas and half her time producing lattes. Right. So Lauren would then be producing six lattes and six pizzas. Right. She'd be choosing some point on her production possibilities frontier. And I've been a bit, it's, it's arbitrary which point we choose. I'm going to say for this example, she chooses to produce half and half, six lattes and six pizzas. And let's say that Chris does the same thing. He spends his time on his own dividing his time between latte production and pizza production. If he spends half his time producing lattes, he can only produce 12 and a half lattes. Right? And if he spends the other half of his time producing pizzas, he can only produce 50 pizzas, right? So this, again, is a point, a single point on his production possibilities frontier somewhere around here. Okay. Collectively, the total production would be 18 and a half lattes and 56 pizzas. So now the question is, can they do better than this, right? Could they specialize in the good for which they have a comparative advantage and then trade to both be better off, right? And to have a higher total production combined between the two of them, right? So let's think about who should specialize in which good, right? We say that Lauren should specialize in the good for which she has a comparative advantage. So let's let Lauren specialize in latte production, right? the good for which she has the lower opportunity cost. Her opportunity cost is lower than Chris's opportunity cost. So let's think about her letting her specialize in latte production, OK? And suppose she spends all of her time with that specialization. Lauren would produce 12 lattes and no pizzas. Right. Now imagine that she's going to trade away some of those lattes in exchange for pizzas. Right. Let's say that she wanted to keep the same six lattes that she had before and trade away those six extra lattes in exchange for more pizzas. Right. When she's working on her own, giving up those six lattes 
cost her six pizzas because it was a one for one ratio. Right? The cost of one latte would be one pizza. So if she wanted to get one more, if she gave, if she gave up production of that latte, she could only gain one pizza. Let's imagine that she's going to trade and in that case, she can trade for a little bit more. Right? Let's imagine that she trades for two pizzas for every latte. Right? That means that she's going to give up six lattes, and she's going to get 12, 12 pizzas in return. Is Chris OK with that? Well, think about what it costs him. Normally, if he wants to gain a latte, he has to give up four pizzas. Right? Now this trade is only going to require him to give up two pizzas. Right? So they're, willing, they're both willing to trade. Lauren's going to be better off, because right now it's costing her one pizza for every latte. Um, that's the most she can get. For Chris, it's costing him four pizzas for every latte. So if they trade at a ratio of two pizzas per latte, they can actually both be better off. Let's see how. So suppose that she's then going to keep six lattes, right? and she's going to get 12 pizzas in return. What does this mean for Chris? Well, he's going to specialize by producing, spending relatively more of his time with the good that he has a comparative advantage in. Right. So that means that Chris is going to specialize in pizza production. So he's going to produce relatively more pizzas. He's going to spend relatively more of his time producing pizzas. Right. Now let's suppose, though, that he also wanted to be as well off as he was before. Right? And suppose that he really wanted to produce 12 and a half lattes, or have 12 and a half lattes at the end of the day. Right? So in that case, he would, get, he would be getting six from Lauren, and he'd have to produce six and a half more on his own in order to be able to get 12 and a half at the end of the day. Okay. So if he spends his time producing six and a half lattes, how much time does that leave to produce pizzas? Right? One way to see how, much, how many pizzas he could produce would be to say that at most he could produce 100 pizzas. Right? And he's going to have to give up some of that pizza production time instead producing those six and a half lattes. Right? And remember that each latte costs him four pizzas. So that means that these six and a half lattes are going to cost him, in total, 26 pizzas. So instead of producing 100 pizzas, he's going to give up 26 of those and instead produce 74 pizzas. Right. So if he produces 74 pizzas, right, he's going to trade 12 of those away and be left with 62 pizzas. Right. But notice that both of these guys are now better off than they were before. Right? They both have the same amount of lattes, but they ended up with each more pizzas. Right? This is the advantage of specialization and trade. Right? When these guys specialize, they're able to, produ to produce more in total than they were before. Right? Before, in total, they were only producing 18 and a half lattes and 56 pizzas. Now they're producing 18 and a half lattes and 72 pizzas. Right? That is, they're producing at some point that's further out than either would have been able to do on their own. Right? So some point like this might be somewhere, let's say, out here. We can reflect all of the production possibilities by looking at the collective production possibilities frontier. Right? So for this joint PPF, first imagine that everyone was spending all of their time producing pizzas. Right? Collectively, they would both be producing 25 lattes, or sorry, pizzas, 100 pizzas and 12 pizzas. That means that in total, they could produce at most 112 pizzas. If they were spending all of their time producing lattes, they would produce, at most, 25 plus 12, or 37 lattes. Right. And somewhere in between here, there's going to be a kink. Right? And that kink is going to occur where both are completely specializing in the good for which they have a comparative advantage. Right? 
if Lauren specializes in lattes and only spends her time producing lattes, she'd be able to produce 12. If Chris spent all of his time producing pizzas and only produced pizzas, he'd be able to produce 100, which means that collectively, they'd be able to produce at a point 12 and 100. So this kink in the PPF is going to be the kink associated with complete specialization, where each person is spending all of their time specializing in the thing for which they have a comparative advantage. And we can connect these dots to trace out all of the production possibilities that these two individuals would have. So that's going to be part of their production possibilities frontier. And this is going to be part of their production possibilities frontier. And this point here is actually going to be just one of the points on that line, right? where they're producing 74 pizzas and 12 and a half lattes. Okay? One more thing about this production possibilities frontier. Notice the slopes that we have here. This is the joint production possibilities frontier. It's sometimes called the economy-wide production possibilities frontier. Notice how it bows out. We get that from specialization. But that bowing out happens such that the slopes are changing right, at that kink. Right? Well, what do those slopes reflect? Notice that this slope here is the same as Lauren's slope. Right? And that's because if we all started out producing pizza and then decided to produce a few more lattes, the person that we should have do it is Lauren because she can do it at a lower cost. Right? So she would produce the lattes at a cost of one pizza, and that means that this is going to have a slope of one. Right? And she's going to continue making that trade-off until she's spending all of her time producing pizzas, sorry, producing lattes, um, producing 12 lattes, and Chris is left producing 100 pizzas. Now, we can also get more lattes, but to do so, we would have to have Chris start some of that production. And when he starts that production, it costs him a little bit more. So that slope is going to get steeper. That's this idea of increasing opportunity cost, which we said before contributes to the bowed out shape. Right? So at this point here, now in order to get one more latte, we need Chris to produce it. And to do so, he's going to have to give up four pizzas. Right? So that means that the slope over here is going to be four pizzas per latte. Right? This slope is going to match Chris's. This slope is going to match Lauren's. Okay? So this is how we can see all the po possible combinations of production that these two individuals could have. And it assumes that when we're making a trade-off, Right? We're going to have the person with the lower opportunity cost specialize in that good. Right? It doesn't always mean that they're going to be completely specialized. Complete specialization happens only here. Right? But all along here, these are possibilities that wouldn't have been, a been available had they not been able to work together and trade.